Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and what I want to show you today is the Sammy Rigid Heddle. And Sammy being the Sammy people or the Laplanders used a rigid heddle system for a waist strap type looming. I'm going to show you a couple tricks that I've learned along the way with the waist strap looming. And then we're going to try to employ this rigid heddle the way the Sammy people did. And then we're going to also employ it the way I normally weave with a waist strap loom and see how it works out both ways and just do a little experimentation on a strap today. And I'm also going to show you how I recreated this Sammy rigid heddle with common everyday material. Stay with me. We'll get started. Okay, so let's talk about building this rigid heddle. Really, really simple. These are craft sticks. They're the heavy duty ones. These aren't the popsicle sticks. These are a little heavier than that. And they were pretty cheap at a craft store. And then I just took them and I stacked them up in a stack like this and just drilled through them so that all the holes were in the same place like that. I stacked them up, put them against the stop, drilled a hole in them, and I drilled a hole in the whole package. And then I can decide how many I need. And then I got four real thin slices of pine here that are right out a foot long. So this heddle is going to be right out a foot. Then all I did was come in here with some wood glue. I mean, this is the simplest, simplest thing you can do just about. I came in here with some wood glue and I just spread it across both of these just like this. Came in here and figured out, a little excess there, figured out where I wanted this thing to start. I butted one up against this positive stop and put the first stick on just like that and then I just stack successive sticks with a gap in between each stick of about an eighth of an inch and what that does is that gives me the heddle string here and it allows the warp string to float up and down and the length of this heddle is really only dictated by how many of these sticks you put in here and how long your material is. And as long as you're up against the positive stop on this side and you just keep this even, you can put spacers in there if you want to or something like that, but it's pretty easy to eyeball this whole thing and not mess it up to tell you the truth. And then I just stacked them on there one at a time. Until I got to the end of the heddle. I didn't pay much attention on this one to how many sticks it would take to get to the end per se. But this is going to dictate how many strings you can loom at a time. Or how thick your band can be. Obviously because you can only put the amount of warp strings in here that you have spaces and holes. Then when I was done with that, I just took another stick, put another row of strip of glue on there, just like that. Laid that on top, just like that. Took the other one. Did the same thing and laid it on top of here. Got everything evened up. And then I just took a toolbox and put it on top of here to weight this whole thing down. And I just came down on it with even pressure just like this. Looked down underneath it to make sure everything was still even. And nothing had moved and let it sit till it dried. It was that simple. And once I let this sit for a few hours and it's dry, I just pulled that rigid head off from underneath that toolbox and trimmed everything up with a jigsaw to make sure everything was evened up and the corners were rounded. And that was all, that was it, done. If you wanted to protect it really well, you probably should put a, some kind of a coating of shellac or varnish over the top of it just to keep it from warping or getting rotten over time or anything like that in case it was to get wet or something. But the one I used in video today, 
just came straight out from underneath this toolbox and we went straight to the woods after I trimmed it up. What I want to show you guys today is called the Sammy Rigid Heddle. And the Sammy people, I've seen photographic evidence of a rigid heddle that was probably made of bone or wood or bone and wood combination that was used by the Sammy people to weave a lot of the decorative trim and things that's on their clothing. And this rigid heddle is no different than a loom heddle in that it has holes for the heddle strings and slots for the warp strings. The difference that I saw with the Sammy people is number one, they attached the woven end off onto a post instead of having the woven end toward them where they're weaving into the weave they're actually weaving away from the weave. Now I thought that was kind of odd so I wanted to try that and see how it worked out with this rigid heddle. Now the other thing that I've been doing lately is I've just taken two metal rings and ran my cordage through those metal rings kind of like a ring belt except it's got a double ring on it like the old belts from the 70s and if you run your it doesn't matter if you run the woven in through that or you're working in through that in this case it works out the same and you can just adjust it and move back away from or you can move this up to adjust things back and forth but it makes it pretty relaxed posture to be able to sit in front of this thing and do your work now i'm used to doing everything with this woven end right here in front of me so this is going to be a little awkward for me but the way this works is like any other loom you lift the heddle up one direction and it opens a shed here if you push this heddle down like this it opens the opposite shed here so you have one set of strings that's rigid called the heddle strings and they are inside these holes and when you lift that up and down it moves those those warps up and down so that you can put your wefts in there now the sammy weaving reed or rigid heddle had another set of holes in it it didn't have one set it had two and the reason for that was the second set of holes would be called the pattern warps and if you remember when we talked about weaving to begin with this type of weaving is called a warp faced weave in other words the only pattern you get is from the strings that are on the warp the warping strings you don't see the wefting strings at all they're always buried within the warp so the only way you can get pattern on this is to either use cards to change which warp strings are at the top and the bottom or have multiple heddle holes so that you have a different set of warp strings and you can bring those strings to the top or bottom at the same time when you open and close a new weft. So they used that method to make their designs instead of card weaving to move those things up and down and interchange what was on top and what was on the bottom. They used a double hole rigid heddle. So I wanted to show you guys this heddle today because I made it very, very simple. I'm going to show you how to recreate this. Um, I do like it. It works really, really well and easy. And you can, with this waist strap looming type situation with these two rings, it makes it pretty easy to keep everything. You can loosen yourself up to get the shed open, and then you can tighten it back down. It makes it really simple. So you can see right here is where my last string came through. Okay, so where we're at with this right now, and again, it's a little awkward for me because I'm not used to weaving this direction. We're going to try it anyway. I think you have to keep this pretty close to you when you're doing this. And I should be ready to open an opposite shed now, which is here. Okay, that's the shed I just opened, so I need to go down to open that shed right here make sure I have run that right through there just like that pull it up tight pull it down pull up to open the next shed you can use your you can use the same needle that you're using or the same shuttle that you're using for feeding your weft in. You can use that as a beater as well if you want to. I do that sometimes or you can 
have a separate beater stick all together. So get that tied in there and then change it out. Go down. And through. Bring in your next one. Now, I don't believe in my mind that for me, I'm getting as tight a weave pattern with this method as I do when I've got this thing sitting right on top of me or when I've got it sitting with the working end over here. But it does work. And I can see that if you got used to it, it would be easy to do. But I think either way is just as easy and it just depends on what you're used to. But I wanted to duplicate what the Sammy people did in the sense of having this woven end away from me instead of toward me and see how this rigid type heddle system would work. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the work around now. And all I did was I just took and put a knot in this end. <coughs> Real simple to get that undone. And I'll weave this end, just use an overhand knot in there. And I'll use this end now through my loops on my belt, on my waist strap. And switch this work around and try to go from the other direction and see how the rigid heddle works that way for me because that's the way I'm used to weaving. And really there's nothing right or wrong in this stuff, it's what you get used to. So I'm going to go ahead and undo these strings and I've just got this wrapped up here so it doesn't get tangled into the weeds and the bushes and the brambles here. And I'm going to pull it out of here and I'm going to switch this around and put the working portion of this through these two rings. And it's just two rings right there and all I did was come up through both of the rings and then go back down through one of the rings just like this and that gave me that adjustment so when you pull on it friction wise it's going to hold it and then you can adjust it as you go and just leave that hanging somewhere through the loops or whatever you want to do while you're adjusting it. Now I'm going to take this end I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down pretty good one thing that you have to be cognizant of when you start messing with this stuff and changing the way you're doing things is you've got to make sure that all these strings are tight. So you're really going to want to be cognizant to make sure you've got all of these strings pulled even and tight again before you go tying this thing off. Because if they're not, it's not going to work right for you. So all of this working end out here is going to have to be pulled with even tension. So I'll just kind of get that heddle squared in the middle there real quick. Give myself a little bit of room to work. And then I'll pull a couple of chains in here. And we'll use this inside the tree and we could just toggle this in at that point once we've got this thing chained like this and this is the same chain type stitch honestly this is the same chain that you use for a base for crochet for your basing chain it's pretty much the same type weave you're just doing it with your fingers and then i'm going to take that and put a toggle through it in this case i'm just going to use my beater stick to make it quick and dirty put that through the tree fork that I was already using like this and then when I back up I just want to make sure that everything's nice and tight looks like it is get this on the right end of things again here and I want to look and make sure that I've got everything pulled nice and tight where I was working you can see these strings aren't quite the way they should be they're twisted just a little bit but that's okay it'll still work now, when we pick this up, we relax and pick this up, that's going to give us our new shed again. Then we can tighten down. I see the, I see part of the reasoning now, the rationale possibly for having this rigid heddle working from the other direction because it might make a difference as far as how twisty this thing gets on you. I think all of this stuff you can work with, you just got to 
get used to what you're doing. It does seem to want to twist over and roll more with this method because of the weight of this heddle and because I've got the string twisted at the other end is probably the reasoning for that. But this rigid heddle does make it very, very easy to open sheds as long as you remember <laughs> which shed you were on to begin with because I just forgot that time. I should have been on the opposite side. I should have been on the down instead of the up. That worked out perfect that I had a splice right there. And now I'm going to go up. Go ahead and beat that down in there good. Like I said, you can use your shuttle for a beater. You don't have to have a second tool for that. It works pretty well either way. Now what I will tell you is that you can definitely tell that this strap was woven on two different types of looming. Part of the strap was woven with just a regular lap on a regular waist loom with the string heddles. And it's down here and it's a really, really tight weave. This is more of a looser weave and it's a little bit wider because this rigid heddle holds things out a little further, I think, from being completely tightened up or tightened up as much maybe. And that could be a function of me being too close to the heddle not being used to reaching out to do things. I don't know. It may not be. It may just be a function of this type looming. It may give you a little bit looser weave. But it's interesting to try different things either way because the only way you're going to find out what really works for you and what you like is to do that. One thing about a rigid heddle like this is that you could make something like this, it's not very big, haversack size, a lot smaller than haversack size really. And you could shove that thing in your backpack, it doesn't weigh anything. This one was made out of a very soft wood like a pine and some craft sticks. Like I said, I'll show you here in a minute how I made this. It was very, very, very simple. So it does work just fine and it gives you a very similar pattern to what we had on the other end of this thing where we used the other type loom, you just get a little bit looser weave and a little bit wider strap, but it's pretty close to the same. So I need to play with it a little bit more and see how I like it. You know, just weaving, you know, six or eight inches of strap doesn't really tell you much about how you're going to do with a loom or how you're going to do a certain type process. It really takes getting down and dirty with the thing and doing the whole thing probably to figure it out. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed this quick uh, video on the Sammy Rigid Heddle. The Rigid Heddle system is a very good system that you can carry 
very lightweight, doesn't weigh a whole lot. You carry that thing into the woods with you and do lots and lots of things. I've showed you lots of different types of weaving techniques to make things like straps, sashes, belts, and trim, and all of those things. And I think it's important for us to understand all of these techniques as we go because you never know when one may come in handy where you may not have this type material with you or you may not have a rigid heddle, but you have string and you can make a string heddle. Or you may be able to improvise some type of vertical or horizontal loom on the fly. And understanding how looming processes work will also allow you to do things like making larger grass mats, covering for shelters, and things of that nature. So thanks for joining me today. Thanks for your support. I appreciate everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. I thank you for everything you do for our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.